Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen here in Japan. Good morning to Europe. I would like to welcome you all at the webinar on the topic of the artificial intelligence in Central Europe and Japan. My name is Stanislav Benes. I am a commercial counselor of the Czech Republic in Tokyo, and I will be your moderator today. Together with me is here in our improvised studio, Mr. Richard Schneider, the director of the Czech Invest Office in Japan, who will be the main producer of this webinar. As the Czech Republic currently holds the rotating presidency of the Visegrad Group, we have the pleasure to host this traditional event, which is taking place in the online forum this year. We have excellent lineup of presenters and the program is very rich. And so we certainly hope that you will find the webinar interesting. Before we proceed with the agenda, I would like to point out the possibility for all of you to send the questions to our presenters during the event through the questions and answers system. We will then prepare them for the Q&A session, which will come at the very end of our program. And now, without further ado, I would like to give word to Prague, to the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Czech Republic, Mr. Martin Klapa, and to ask him to officially address us on behalf of the Visegrad Group Presidency. Mr. Deputy Minister. Thank you uh, to, uh, to Japan. Good morning from Europe, uh, from Prague and uh, from other countries. So let me first thank all who are behind this project. It's, uh, it's a very innovative and very good way how to communicate in difficult time. And this webinar is very important even. And it's putting us not only uh, one country, but, uh, but the whole Visegrad group. So I think it's a great initiative and I, I would like to thank all who are participating in this uh, projects on, in all countries and uh, all presentations. So thank you very much for that. It's not a surprise that Visegrad countries uh, are focusing on, on Japan uh, because we have very live uh, relations uh, from the beginning of the transformation of uh, Czech Republic. Japan was very active. It was and still is one of the largest investors. Uh, invested to the Czech, to the Czech Republic, and I think that the same is uh, is true for all other Visegrad countries. At the same time, uh, Visegrad countries are very active in uh, boosting the economic growth and uh, to modernize the economy, and uh, also to use uh, artificial uh, development and artificial intelligence as a one of the tool how to be successful in the global world in the future. So I think that this topic is perfectly coming together. And I think that the base of the experience we have uh, bilaterally with the relations uh, and the cooperation between uh, Japan and the Visegrad countries in many sectors, uh, including electronics, by the way, optics or car industry or high tech industries. I think that there is a place for um, sharing uh, the knowledge we can do together. That's why I'm very happy that we pick up during our presidency this uh, event as uh, one of the leading uh, activities in our relations. So that's a very perfect uh, way. And uh, based on that, uh, we have a discussion about uh, how the world will change or not change after this uh, coronavirus um, uh, crisis we are facing now globally. <clears throat> and I think that one of the lessons we will learn is definitely uh, think how artificial intelligence can help uh, in medical industry, in uh, health uh, system in several countries. And the technology is definitely, I'm sure, will be demanded globally. So I hope that this um, this event can put together the ideas uh, what we can do together based on our great relations <clears throat> and also considering what is demanded in the world. So I think that the message is let's put our researches together, but uh, encourage common projects, institutions and uh, think that uh, there is a global demand for the um, uh, new technologies uh, and uh, we can we can offer something which is really needed. So that's uh, that's a very uh, important thing. Um, we have special relations to IT and uh, many Japanese know that uh, the world robot was uh, discovered uh, in uh, created by Karl Chapek writer uh, and is now widely used worldwide. But I think that the most important thing is um, just um, learn from the history, but do the things which are demanded for the future. 
And I'm very happy that uh, artificial intelligence, the system, how can boost uh, the growth and uh, the wellness, uh, the, the happiness in the world is uh, one of the important tools. So thanks for all who are behind that. And we will be ha very happy to cooperate as uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry of the Czech Republic for the project. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. And uh, now it is my pleasure to ask Mr. Martin Tomcho, the Ambassador of the Czech Republic to Japan, for his welcoming remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you also on behalf of the Czech Embassy in Tokyo. I would like to um, thank all the participants and uh, all um, organizers uh, of our webinar. In accordance uh, with our tradition, we plan to hold a V4 seminar at our embassy. However, uh, the pandemic made it impossible. I am happy that more than 300 uh, people have registered to uh, this online version. Uh, today's webinar shows the importance of uh, development of artificial intelligence for the Czech Republic and uh, the V4 countries as well. The timing is accurate. Japan has cemented its status as a technological leader in areas as diverse as aeronautics and robotics. It's no surprise uh, that Tokyo Summer Olympic Games uh, are organized under the slogan um, um, Country for Tomorrow or Discover Tomorrow. Robots are emblematic of Japan's uh, Japan status as one of the world leaders in futuristic, uh, futuri futuristic, fut futuristic technology. The organizers count uh, on the wide use of artificial intelligence uh, during the Olympic Games. It's my pleasure to introduce our uh, esteemed guest, uh, Mr. Naokazu Takemoto, is Minister of State for Science and Technology Policy and Minister in Charge of Information Technology Policy. And also Minister of State uh, for Space Policy, the Intellectual Property Strategy and Cool Japan Strategy. According to the or original plan, Mr. Takemoto was supposed to sit next to me. However, he, we need, uh, he needs to be somewhere uh, else due to emergency issues. So we are going to broadcast this video message. Last but not least, thank you for your attention. I wish everyone a successful, successful webinar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Naokazu Takemoto, uh, Minister of State for Science and Technology Policy of Japan. I'd like to express my sincere gratitude for giving me this opportunity. In my speech today, I'd like to touch on three subjects on Japan's AI strategy. Firstly, I'd like to give you the background why Japan put emphasis on AI principles and ethics. Then I'll share with you an overview of Japan's AI strategy, which was established last year. And lastly, I'd like to express my views on the important pillar of Japan's AI strategy. This is to say the construction of a core research network of AI. So please recall the first subject, why Japan emphasizes on AI principles and ethics. Nowadays, AI and utilization of big data uh, changing our lifestyle at an accelerated pace. AI has brought us advanced medical diagnosis, automated driving system, high productivity in manufacturing, and so on. On the other hand, the rapid expansion of AI utilization arouses public concerns over cyber security, invasion of privacy, and the possible loss of jobs as symbolized by the word of singularity, singularity. In this respect, what is the key to realize an AI already AI ready society in which people can enjoy the benefit of AI while 
the leaving the concerns. The answer is the social principle and ethics. Uh, this is why Japan formulated the social principles of human ethics AI. Prior to examining its AI strategy, the social principles of human centric AI uphold the three basic philosophies of dignity, diversity and inclusion, and sustainability. It also consists of seven strategic objectives in light of education, fairness, privacy, security, and so on. Furthermore, in order to make it a common global vision, global vision Japan contributes to establish the G20 AI principles as the chair country of the G20 Osaka Summit last year. Now, I move on to the next subject. An overview of Japan's AI strategy, which was established last year. Japan's AI strategy was set four strategic objectives. One, human resources. Two, development to two, real world. Three, technologies for inclusion. And lastly, international, international cooperation. It also identifies initiatives for building a foundation for the future, including innovation environment, infrastructure for industry and society, ethical, legal, and social issues to achieve the strategic objectives. As I noted earlier, as the third subject, the construction of a core research network is one of the important pillars of Japan's AI strategy as the initiative for innovation environment. In order to further enhance Japan's AI-related research capabilities and promote social implement implementation of research results, it is important that universities and public research institutes must cooperate and complement each other while exhibiting their respective strengths. Under such recognition, Japan established AI Japan R&D network last year. One online organizations, including 80 universities, are actively engaged in AI R&D in Japan. In response to the current situation about the COVID-19 infection, AI has contributed in various aspects such as uh, therapeutic drug development (PCR), infection simulation, and remote environment treatment. I believe that AI Japan R&D network with contribute more to providing opportunities for collaboration of AI research and development in Japan. As you may know, the European Commission and Japan signed a letter of intent on strengthening cooperation in science, technology and innovation on 26 May. I hope that we will continue to work closely together to promote for the successful development and the deployment of AI. Lastly, I'd like to express my heartfelt and the deepest appreciation of Ambassador Martin Tomko and their staff for organizing this webinar. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Now, uh, I would like to introduce uh, first of the, the speakers, uh, first of the presenters, uh, Dr. Tomasz Mikolov, uh, who used to work as a researcher in the United States in Google and Facebook, and currently he is building a new research team at the Czech Institute of Informatics, Robotics and Cybernetics in Prague with a focus on complex systems and general artificial intelligence. Uh, it will be about the contribution of the Czech Republic to the deep learning research, uh, which uh, is actually the part of uh, artificial intelligence that uh, made the most progress uh, recently in uh, 
let's say the last decade, if you did read uh, all these news about how AI is uh, solving some new amazing tasks, then I would say more than 90% of this was actually uh, based on the techniques that are being called deep learning, which is actually itself uh, like a form of uh, artificial neural networks, uh, which uh, goes back to uh, at least the 80s of the, from the previous century when these uh, when these ideas were mostly developed. Uh, at the same time, you may, you may be wondering uh, how comes that this AI boom didn't happen already in the 80s, even, but why it did take another like 20, 30 years. Uh, well, the thing is that uh, just having the ideas uh, is not enough. You have to actually make them work in some important tasks. And uh, while you are trying to do so, you have to develop a lot of uh, small tricks uh, that are actually very important and that are not that easy to find. So it took uh, many researchers, uh, actually several decades, uh, to get to the point where the deep learning started to actually work. And today I will be talking about the contribution of several researchers from uh, Czech Republic who did actually contribute to this uh, to this uh, breakthrough discoveries uh, that actually happened uh, that 10, 15 years ago. So the first thing that I did actually uh, see uh, as a student was this work of my uh, more senior colleagues who were using uh, multi-layer perceptrons, which is actually what is today called deep learning uh, in a speech recognition system. It used to be just this small box. If you actually look at it, the whole speech recognition system it used to be like a very complicated and the neural network was uh, kind of like smallish, uh, but uh, it already had all the important components that today are used in uh, deep learning. That is, it had uh, several nonlinearities. Uh, it also did work very well. It, uh, it was able to reduce the water rate uh, by about 10% over like a very strong uh, speech recognition system. And actually, Francis Chagrezel, who did uh, produce this work, uh, did publish several papers around it. Uh, uh, he was not alone, actually, in the Bernal speech uh, uh, recognition group. Uh, there was also like Peter Schwartz who did uh, create a phoneme recognizer that was uh, based purely on neural networks. And it was uh, at its time like a very amazing work that actually did convince uh, at least part of the speech recognition community that there's uh, actually some hope that these neural networks can work, uh, even if at the time uh, there was a lot of disbelief. Uh, and it actually follow in uh, similar lines, but actually I was interested more uh, in uh, modeling the language uh, uh, because that's an important uh, part of speech recognition as well as machine translation and many other tasks. So for me, it was personally uh, more interesting uh, to work on uh, language modeling. Uh, uh, but uh, when I was a student myself, uh, there was like a, this uh, this uh, kind of like a not very exciting atmosphere in the language modeling community, which was very smallish. Uh, people actually believed that there's uh, not really much uh, any uh, gains left. Uh, uh, to be achieved that if you actually use uh, large angular models trained on a lot of data that uh, they are going to be unbeatable. That was basically the atmosphere uh, like some 15 years ago. Uh, so here we can even see the graph uh, of the progress of the best results published in language modeling on some standard benchmark. And you can actually see that the gains over time were getting smaller and smaller and were uh, actually uh, more like suggesting that we are reaching some plateau and that uh, there's not really much anything more to gain. Uh, well, uh, when I actually joined this uh, this research direction, I did uh, believe actually that there's uh, quite a few more things to be done uh, that uh, we can actually do much better, even if uh, basically several generations of uh, researchers before me uh, didn't actually advance significantly the core ideas behind language modeling, which was based on this engram statistics uh, going back to the middle of the previous century to Claude Shannon, who was already applying them uh, these models to English. Uh, uh, that was actually the, the famous scientist who did uh, win the, the Nobel Prize for the theory of information. So there was really not, not that much more uh, progress in terms of ideas over maybe half a century. Uh, however, the, when I joined, uh, uh, this research direction, I did, uh, really believe for a couple of reasons that I'm not going to discuss in detail that uh, neural networks can actually um, work uh, quite a bit better than the state of the art. And this is actually the simple model that I more or less started uh, with. Uh, and uh, it's basically a neural network with just one hidden layer, but it has the specialty that uh, it is a recurrent layer, which means that it can create uh, short term memory. Uh, I'm really sorry. Could you share your uh, slides again, please? Uh, oh, OK. Uh, so here is uh, just like a graphical representation of the recurrent uh, language model 
uh, that I invented around the year 2010. Actually, it's based on ideas going back to Jeff Elman from the 1990, but it's uh, having uh, quite a few differences in how the model is trained. I'm not going to go over all the details, but just to explain what was actually the magical thing. Uh, uh, the whole model can be described by these few equations. Uh, maybe they look a bit uh, complicated if you see them at first, but uh, if you would actually see uh, other types of language models, then this is actually a super simple approach. Like uh, you can really code uh, all this model in a few lines in C++. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, very simple. And uh, again, actually, there was a lot of people who did believe that uh, this model is way too simple to actually work well. There was this impression that we have to do something very complicated, but it turned out that uh, actually simple things work uh, amazing. Uh, and uh, if you actually look at what happened actually after, there was this uh, this uh, progress uh, in uh, in uh, the quality of the language models were actually lower is better. And you see that uh, over the years, I did publish a couple of papers uh, uh, that were actually incrementally improving my my original paper on these recurrent language models, uh, and the perplexity dropped by by a huge uh, margin. Uh, and uh, it was actually amazing to live during this time because it was kind of like a revolution. Uh, I did go from like a, a point where uh, most of the researchers, uh, almost all of the researchers in the in the community, were thinking that these models cannot work ever. Uh, to the point where actually everybody was using them. It took maybe just two or three years. Uh, so it was uh, it was really amazing to to uh, to see this. Uh, and actually, you can see that even the the further state of the art results uh, on language modeling, everything is today uh, based on neural networks. Uh, so it completely took over and uh, changed the the direction in how people think about language. Uh, so I, I just have like these few slides that just show that it was very really difficult to actually work on language modeling and neural networks uh, uh, before actually there were like these uh, these huge gains. But uh, after actually uh, we discovered uh, the, these uh, these uh, breakthrough technologies, uh, there was this deep learning boom where actually uh, like a majority, a large majority of the research communities in the natural language processing, the speech recognition, the machine translation, they all started uh, to use these uh, multi-layer neural networks, uh, in other words, uh, deep learning, and suddenly it was uh, it was exciting uh, to see this. Uh, uh, I will also like uh, speak about one uh, final algorithm that uh, is uh, like used as a building block in uh, pretty much like many, many uh, NLP applications, like natural language processing applications. Uh, uh, it can uh, train distributed representations of words extremely fast. Uh, I did publish it when I was working at uh, Google Brain in uh, California, but actually it's based on the ideas that I developed uh, originally in Czech, so I'm including it still in this presentation. And it's one of the most cited papers ever published uh, in the in the area of natural language processing. So again, like the models can be shown like uh, their graphical representations is extremely simple. Instead of a, a language model where the task is to predict the next word in a sentence, uh, these models are using uh, sort of like a back of words representations to predict uh, the middle word in a sentence given a context. Uh, there are some differences, but I'm not going to go over the details. Uh, thing is that uh, when we trained these uh, models on like thousand times more data than whatever could uh, do before with the previous techniques that were having the same objective, we did uh, obtain these uh, numerical representations of words, in other words, uh, the word vectors, uh, is where the name comes from, that had such a high quality that when we did visualize this space, we could see the the, the structure of the words in this uh, in this 2D map. So each word is basically converted to some sequence of numbers. That's the vector. And then we did uh, do this visualization. The gray arrows are added uh, supervisedly by us. We basically did observe that there's some shift in this space where we go from, uh, from a country to its uh, capital city. And it was all trained by a model that just basically reads the Wikipedia and uh, nobody tells it anything. So it was actually quite amazing. And uh, it convinced uh, many of the researchers that uh, these uh, models actually uh, can be extremely powerful. And actually that's what happened. Uh, these models uh, became uh, like the, especially the neural language models became uh, part of Google Translate. Uh, that's basically why there was this uh, huge improvement in quality that you might have observed a couple of years ago. I was at the beginning of this uh, project. I started a collaboration between Google Brain and uh, 
and uh, Google Translate teams. Uh, so it's really used in tons of applications, including Google Search and basically many of the applications that you can see today, today on the web. They are using some form of either war vectors or neural network language models somewhere, uh, somewhere hidden in them. So I would say that the, the breakthrough technologies that, uh, that allow this to be uh, to be developed were actually developed in significant part uh, here in Czech Republic. Uh, we did also like open source uh, these projects. So I think that we did great on the basic research. Uh, at the same time, I think that we could have done a little bit better when it comes to connecting the basic research uh, with, uh, with the applied research and industry, because if you really see there these models that actually gain, uh, generate the biggest profits, it's actually not really Europe, it's, uh, it's in the US. Uh, where actually today is the United States are today the center of the AI research, uh, which I find a bit unsatisfactory, but that's basically the reality and we have still a lot to improve in the future. So I think that uh, we can do great research uh, here in Europe, uh, here in Czech Republic, uh, but I think that we can be uh, doing better in the future when it comes to also generating uh, the applications and the profits uh, here back in Europe. So that's uh, that's all from me. Uh, thank you for the attention and just I have a couple of references. If any one of you actually wants to see these uh, almost historical papers by now, even if they are not that old, but uh, as I said, they were at the beginning of this uh, deep learning revolution and we can go to the details uh, in the question answering session at the end. Thanks for the attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Mikolov, uh, for your uh, presentation. Um, I hope that we will have a chance to, to hear uh, from you more at the very end of the Q&A session and hopefully also to see you. It's, it's a shame that we, we can't see you. Uh, anyway, the next presenter is Dr. Peter Galambosch, who is the director of the Antal Bezi Center for Intelligent Robotics at Obuda University in Budapest. His research includes advanced artificial intelligence for industrial robotics and control systems, cyber physical systems, and virtual reality. Dr. Galambos, floor is yours. Okay, hopefully everyone uh, hear me now. Is that... Okay, fantastic. So uh, thank you very much for the introduction. It is my uh, great honor to uh, to uh, uh, make this talk uh, uh, here in this uh, important event. Um, I would like to talk about the advanced AI for uh, industrial robotics uh, in an aspect that we um, we are representing here in uh, in in Hungary uh, in some sense in close connection uh, uh, to our partners in uh, Visegrad countries and uh, in a close connection uh, with our uh, Japanese uh, uh, partners. Uh, so uh, let me very briefly introduce our institution. Uh, our name giver professor is uh, Tony Bates, uh, uh, who was uh, probably the most uh, well-known uh, roboticist uh, originally born in, in Hungary. Uh, but uh, actually his research activity was performed in the NASA uh, uh, JPL uh, <clears throat> and uh, we are very proud of uh, using his name as a name giver of uh, our laboratory at uh, Obuda University. Uh, in uh, robotics, because robotics is a, is a very huge uh, research and application areas, we cannot deal with everything. Uh, we, uh, we are focusing on uh, telepresence, advanced applied robotics, cloud robotics and medical uh, robot applications, uh, which we usually refer to as industrial and medical cyber physical uh, uh, systems. Uh, here are some of our major topics, uh, what we have uh, real experience, uh, robotic system design, manufacturing, uh, control design and control science, uh, machine learning and uh, other AI uh, uh, techniques, prototyping, mechanical design, and proof of concept validations uh, of uh, not only uh, AI-based solutions, uh, but uh, any sort of uh, modern technology solutions uh, in the mentioned topics. Uh, our other leg uh, in robotics is the medical robot applications, in which we are focusing on surgical uh, robo robotics, including skill assessment, uh, surgical uh, ontologies, and uh, other uh, semantic uh, representations used 
uh, in uh, minimal invasive uh, robotic uh, surgery. Our uh, mission uh, can be characterized uh, with the sentence end-to-end -end, uh, innovation uh, model, uh, which means uh, that we uh, we uh, go in research from the formula uh, uh, to the prototype. So uh, our goal is to cover uh, a very wide uh, spectrum of the uh, innovation uh, value chain. Uh, therefore, uh, in our uh, groups, uh, we have uh, people uh, who are performing fundamental uh, research in physics and mathematics, and also uh, we have uh, uh, very practical people engineers and technicians uh, who can uh, transfer uh, the uh, theoretical research results uh, into uh, prototypes. Uh, I just included a, a bunch of pictures uh, uh, from, uh, from the Robotics Center of Obuda University. Uh, we are dealing with various uh, robotic arms uh, and uh, other uh, devices. As you see, we often uh, uh, make um, introductory lectures to secondary school and even for primary school uh, students uh, about robotics. We, we do have a maker space, which is very common actually in Japanese universities. Uh, so in the research lab, we can, uh, we can uh, create our uh, prototypes on our own, own uh, premises, which is very cool. And you can see that, uh, for example, in this April, just before the, uh, the uh, pandemic, uh, we uh, hosted a group of students from the Shibaura Institute of Technology from uh, Japan. Uh, they were enjoyed pretty much uh, their, uh, uh, their internship in, in, in Hungary. Uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, let me just introduce uh, uh, the, the lab uh, in, in a VR modality. So you can see uh, uh, how uh, we uh, we built up uh, the, the robotics lab. Uh, this is an area uh, where industrial robotics research uh, is performed. Uh, uh, we have a surgical robot system uh, with a research uh, controller, and we can jump over uh, here to the maker space. It's a little bit messy, uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, it is very active, uh, many students and, uh, and engineers working there. Uh, we can come back later on. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> we try to be active in uh, V4 countries uh, um, in, in different partnerships. Uh, we have uh, just uh, finished last year uh, a uh, successful project um, with uh, Czech, uh, Czechish and Slo Slovak uh, um, uh, universities together and just yesterday we submitted a uh, Horizon 2020 proposal uh, dealing with uh, flexible worker-centric robotics in the food processing uh, industry and the key partner here is the Czech Technical University at Prague. Uh, Professor Václav Klavac uh, uh, is uh, the, uh, uh, the main uh, scientific uh, contributor to this uh, uh, proposal and uh, hopefully we can uh, establish a really fruitful uh, connection. Uh, not only in the V4 countries we are active, uh, but uh, uh, it's a long tradition in Obuda University uh, to make good friendship and deep friendship with Japanese partners. Uh, therefore, we have act active connections to the Tokyo Metropolitan University, the Tohoku University, Nagoya University, uh, especially a, a very active student exchange project uh, with the Shibaro Institute of Technology. And for example, one of my students is now uh, on a uh, Vulcanos internship program at Omron's uh, uh, robotics uh, group. And uh, we, um, we are very proud of uh, our Japanese advisory board uh, members, uh, uh, those uh, very uh, recognized professors uh, are considered as just superheroes of robotics uh, uh, from uh, Japan. Uh, Toshio Fukuda is actually the, the current president of IEEE, uh, while Kazuhiro Kosuge, professor, is the president of the Robotics and Automation uh, Society uh, of, uh, uh, of IEEE. Robotics uh, is a disruptive uh, megatrend uh, today, and it is very hard to talk about uh, pure robotics. A few years ago, uh, let's say in the early uh, uh, early 2000s, uh, robotics was a quite uh, a clear discipline. But now, uh, robotics 
is uh, overlapped with Internet of Things, uh, uh, drones, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, etc. And it became a really, really uh, a huge business and it has a great business uh, uh, potential. Uh, uh, therefore, we are uh, uh, thinking in robotics and artificial intelligence uh, as an umbrella uh, uh, topic. And actually, uh, it's a very important and very huge uh, meeting uh, between uh, the, uh, the well-established uh, AI uh, technologies. Uh, just we have heard from uh, Dr. Mikolov uh, in the natural language processing uh, topics. Um, uh, these techniques are now co in uh, connection with uh, advanced mechatronics. Uh, and uh, this will be a really, really huge uh, impact to our everyday uh, uh, life. Uh, and our research topics uh, uh, would like to contribute uh, to this uh, fantastic uh, revolution. Uh, there are some really hard challenges uh, in, in robotics, not mentioning here uh, the uh, um, language related uh, uh, cognitive parts. Uh, I'm uh, here rather focusing on the motion and action uh, uh, related uh, uh, topics, which are also uh, very, very uh, uh, common uh, and <coughs> means uh, today a technology uh, barrier um, um, in front of the robotics development. Uh, in that sense, the, ro uh, the robot perception, the knowledge adaptation, uh, various kind of motion planning of mobile robots, uh, the full body uh, uh, structures and the precise fine motoric manipulations are uh, in included in, in the most uh, challenging uh, uh, questions. And uh, many of the current uh, research activities all over the world uh, aimed uh, at uh, formulating uh, the general knowledge in a way uh, that is able to synthesize useful uh, robotic actions uh, in a, uh, a highly uh, autonomous uh, uh, manner. Uh, another important topic now is uh, the uh, cloud uh, robotics. Uh, you may know that every uh, robots are restricted in terms of uh, uh, CPU, uh, memory, uh, electric power, etc. Uh, therefore, uh, most of the computational um, um, elements, the computational agents uh, are uh, usually uh, transferred uh, to a, uh, um, a computing capacity outside of the robot. Uh, this uh, phenomena uh, is uh, the so-called uh, cloud uh, robotics or cloud sourcing uh, in which the brain, the in intellectual uh, capacities of the robot moves uh, out uh, uh, to the cloud. We can see the two ends uh, uh, of this uh, a spectrum, the conventional robotics in which everything is included in the robot controller uh, and the other end uh, of the spectrum in which uh, uh, the robots are basically uh, just puppets without onboard intelligence. Uh, only the sensing, actuation and communication is uh, uh, on, on board. And uh, this approach uh, opens uh, a really uh, a huge opportunity uh, um, for uh, AI-based uh, robot applications. In Obuda University, uh, uh, we are involved, uh, for example, in industrial intralogistics uh, uh, research uh, for developing, um, for developing uh, AGVs, autonomously guided uh, vehicles. And uh, our task uh, includes sensor fusion, cruise control, simultaneous localization and mapping, uh, and uh, for example, obstacle detection, uh, which is a very good uh, uh, field uh, for uh, for visual AI uh, uh, techniques. Um, here we have uh, serious challenges. Uh, what we have to solve uh, with very simple onboard sensors, uh, and uh, to show some uh, some results, I uh, included a video uh, here uh, where we can uh, where we can see. Hopefully, I can play the video. Yeah. There we can see uh, how the so-called optical flow modality can be used to detect uh, uh, moving uh, obstacles uh, on board uh, of an industrial intralogistic uh, uh, mobile uh, uh, platform. Uh, these uh, 
is uh, performed through convolutional neural networks that was mentioned before in the presentation of Dr. Uh, uh, Mikolov uh, also. Uh, these techniques are now available, uh, just can be included in industrial uh, products, uh, but the technology transfer is uh, always uh, a huge uh, uh, challenge. Another very interesting topic is the sensor fusion uh, in which uh, from different sensor, sensor modalities, uh, higher level and more precise information uh, can be generated. Uh, and uh, many uh, AI techniques uh, from the uh, machine learning, for, for example, principal component analysis and also deep learning uh, uh, can be very useful in tuning uh, of uh, uh, sensor fusion uh, uh, solutions. In such solutions, uh, the mobile mobile robots, uh, for example, can can be equipped uh, with arbitrary kind of uh, sensors and an AI based uh, uh, predictive uh, uh, model um, can compose the optimal or suboptimal construction uh, of a sensor fusion computational uh, model. Uh, a very uh, practical AI uh, based uh, solution is the so called bean picking or assorted manipulation uh, in industrial robotics, where the robots can cope with, uh, uh, with, with unstructured environment, uh, for example, uh, mechanical parts or uh, that are just uh, uh, that are just uh, uh, in a in a heap heap uh, uh, from which the robots uh, need to uh, need to grab and uh, and place uh, the, the parts uh, to an assembly, uh, uh, for example. And uh, making this uh, fast enough and robust enough is still a challenge, but uh, there are some really good results and really good commercial applications, uh, uh, partly from, for example, uh, uh, Slovakia, uh, from uh, uh, Japan, and also uh, from Hungary for, for, from our uh, laboratories. Uh, we are uh, kind of active uh, in this field. I could uh, show uh, many uh, interesting videos uh, how we teach the artificial intelligence through uh, simulations. Uh, but uh, I'm uh, just running out of time, uh, so maybe uh, we uh, keep uh, the rest for the question and answer uh, uh, session. Uh, feel free to compose your uh, questions and deliver those to me. Uh, in the end of uh, today's event, we have the chance to talk about uh, all the results and possible con uh, uh, contributions, possible cooperations between V4 uh, and uh, Japanese uh, researchers and uh, business-oriented uh, people as uh, well. So thank you very much uh, for the attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Galambos, for your interesting presentation. And from Warsaw will now be joining us Mr. Robert Kroplewski, plenipotentiary of the Minister of Digital Affairs of the Republic of Poland uh, for the Information Society. The main topic of his presentation is the transborder ecosystem for sharing data and artificial intelligence development. Mr. Kroplewski. Good morning, everybody. One, one more time. Uh, thank you for invitation for uh, Czech uh, representation in Tokyo um, Embassy and colleagues from the Japan and colleagues from the uh, other Visegrad countries. I try to uh, say uh, some words uh, from the policy making perspective, uh, not so much uh, about the developing and, uh, and, and science, but is also included. Uh, I, I try to uh, present the shaping uh, uh, trust the transborder ecosystem of sharing data and uh, artificial intelligence development from the Polish uh, artificial intelligence policy perspective. It is very good that we uh, meet together uh, with that composition, uh, five, five countries, uh, four from the Central Europe and, and one from the uh, very um, far away Asia, but, but very modern and uh, like-minded th thinking in many, many topics. Uh, some words about Poland and our um, efforts and our uh, attitudes from the history and now um, to, to present our country and our um, Polish scientists. Uh, we, um, our colleagues uh, are co-authors of very famous and international recognized uh, projects, for example, OpenAI, Fitorch, FastTech, 
bio, inception uh, and alpha star and uh, last a very good industry which is developed in, in Poland is a gaming. Uh, you, you probably know the movie which are produced by CD Projekt. But why we do it? Because we have a good um, basement. Uh, the basement uh, came from the Mr. Stanislaw Lem, uh, the, the, the author of Reality of Futurism, internationally recognized prophet of new technology. Uh, many, many things, probably uh, every, uh, every, every one um, um, recognized by him uh, during the 70s and, and 80s. Now it's a reality uh, in the global virtual uh, space. But also we have a uh, historical backgrounds. We, we had a Polish school of mathematics. They uh, produced Enigma and uh, was a co cooperator um, uh, with Turing Institute. Uh, and now we have a, a very good uh, youth, uh, which gets the fourth position in the PISA uh, index, uh, creating it of uh, OSD. Um, I try to say this because we have a big background and we 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 um, carry our uh, work globally. Try try to do it. Of course, we have a problem because we have a, a, a big immigration, scient scientist immigration, and. Our main topic now is to invite our, our colleagues, our engineer to work uh, with Poland with special institute, which we uh, launch uh, in some months. And, uh, our st strength uh, side uh, now, um, our GDP um, is depending uh, of 46% uh, uh, of flowing of data. This is uh, a strength of agile governance. Um, if we try to, uh, our strength is uh, uh, depending of 46% uh, of flowing of data. Uh, also, um, our society represents 36% uh, of, of creativity class. We are very deep in the special projects, very, um, very modern human eye, brain eye casus also. And, and uh, scientists represent, academia represents um, bio and social knowledge uh, as an input of artificial intelligence um, actually. We uh, launched the Foundation of Future Industry, a special central um, is, uh, institution we, uh, which governs uh, our uh, transformation of industry uh, for zero artificial intelligence, Internet of Things and uh, blockchain also. I mentioned the Łukasiewicz Network. This is the first virtual uh, institute of, science, of scientists uh, engaging microelectronics, automation, logistics, artificial intelligence, and uh, marine and cosmo industry also. But from the cybersecurity perspective, we have a national public institute uh, called NASC. That, that institute, we um, agree uh, in our policy uh, to, to uh, create the standards of uh, uh, robust AI uh, and uh, cybersecurity in artificial intelligence. A uh, very short uh, picture of our um, policy, uh, artificial intelligence policy. We decided not to take part in the uh, global reigning uh, as a priority. We decided to build the uh, ecosystem from as from from uh, uh, down to top and from top to, to down, and if, if you could see, uh, we uh, one of our um, feature is the international dimensions. Uh, if I uh, could say something about this, uh, we of course uh, are open for like-minded uh, allies, but also ha has a, a priority. Uh, we have a priority uh, of uh, legal perspective. For example. Uh, no uh, personal, um, um, no no personalization er, and no no legal per, per, uh, personality of artificial intelligence is our priority. Also, this um, ba balancing of the platformization, and uh, fi finally, um, we uh, are focused on the flowing of data, uh, not not only in the European Union but but also outside of the European Union. But uh, we uh, try to, um, we discovered that uh, our problem is uh, of co coordination of uh, our assets. We have a good scientist, we have a, um, data, we have a business uh, and clients, we have a, even a, a infrastructure, but the coordination is a key thing. And because of that, we decided to launch the governance of uh, artificial intelligence. And the, the, the leader of that governance is the Ministry of Digital Affairs 
with special uh, community of digitaliza digitalization. We are oriented or ethical artificial intelligence, but uh, from the human dignity perspective and well-being of society. And we uh, um, approve uh, and we support the European uh, concept of trustworthy of artificial intelligence. That concept is also um, a, a part of the stewardship of artificial intelligence uh, project uh, called uh, and, and published by OECD. But coming to, to the um, global things, that is a big question. Whose system governs artificial intelligence and global order by artificial intelligence? And we um, even decided that no one but rules of the market and the technology decide who is the first. But um, Having many organizations uh, from uh, from one side, uh, from the multi multilateralism like OECD, European Council, Council of Europe, UNESCO, and, and uh, World Trade Organization, even we couldn't find any special governance of, uh, of artificial intelligence. We, uh, from the Polish perspective, uh, rather try to find and and uh, and have um, and and feel that we, that is a chance that um, we can create some pluralism of other fora, for example, uh, Visegr uh, uh, Visegrad countries and Japan or, or other like-minded countries to create some governing uh, of um, basement or uh, enables of artificial intelligence and artificial, artificial intelligence itself. Uh, this is important to say that uh, Japan and uh, European Union has a uh, free trade agreement, but uh, that agreement is uh, very poor. Uh, for example, Visegrad countries, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland and, and Hungary uh, uh, were uh, very uh, active uh, partners to, to promote the um, very um, offensive uh, free trade agreement uh, with Japan uh, con uh, focusing on, on the free, uh, free flow of data. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the European Union, because we are part of this, uh, decided uh, that, uh, that only the revision clause is enough in that agreement, uh, and we will wait how how it w works, how how the future will be, and uh, maybe we uh, come back to the more uh, ambitious clause uh, on flowing of data. Uh, but it's very important to say that um, no rules of digital trade. Um, is produced by uh, World Trade Organizations, only moratorium on the duty on digital service. We have a freedom of flowing of non-personal data, fortun fortunately, and uh, um, it, it, it is not depending on personal data um, so much, and uh, we have a space to, to create some good shape of sharing of data. Um, this is uh, important also to say that um, thinking and ha having the big picture uh, the, the data localization requirements uh, uh, is, is, exist in China, uh, Russia, India, Brazil uh, also. And th this is a problematic if you th think about the open innovation uh, framework uh, of artificial intelligence. And we have a global co competition on types of network, finally, and uh, the, the, the first position on the market and, and on the governance of access to data pools. This is a uh, problem, but at it, it the same moment, this is a chance to create something uh, original. Of course, we have a global competition of, on ethics. It's not about ethics like a high level thinking, philosophical thinking, but also it, and, and it, it is a main thing on standards, ethical standards. It's, uh, now we have an, not only competition about interoperability or technical standards, but also about thinking how we can trust uh, to, to artificial intelligence. We have uh, uh, three uh, frameworks. Uh, one from the United States is a very usable. Uh, one from the Asia, uh, rather promoting by, uh, by uh, China, it's uh, an inclusion of people. And uh, the, the concept from uh, European Union and uh, other countries, uh, like uh, Visegrad countries, it's a trustworthy artificial intelligence, like, like a trademark and like a, a non-technical and technical um, composition of uh, artificial intelligence. 
And no global stewardship of artificial intelligence development and deployment now. How to do it? And I'm happy that that meeting is organized because we have a chance to understand and maybe to create a common cooperation and understanding among stakeholders. But what, uh, how? Uh, more uh, productive way it's not to establish a legal framework, but try to think about new rec tech diplo environment, soft architecture. I know that Japan is known from the industry 5.0, and I know that Japan is known from the concept Society 5.0. It's very influential. Maybe we need to understand that concept more to, to try to find some solutions and co cooperate together. But we have many problems in, in, in front of us. Um, be, before that, we have, of, of, of course, the chance uh, because the virtualization, uh, if meets uh, augmentation of the physical world and culture, uh, we can uh, find the new neighbors despite of any borders. The virtual space is open. We can cooperate even uh, with country which is situated uh, with long distance. Japan is a very good sample of that. But um, uh, of course, if we uh, think about risk, the, the problem from the Polish perspective is the transfer of values and a transfer of uh, taxation. Uh, this is a topic, of course, uh, which is now uh, subject of, um, of uh, OECD. But the future belongs to the new entertainment. And because of that, we, uh, with our society, uh, trying to be prepared for new dopamine entertainment, new dopamine uh, economy. It's uh, very risky uh, and um, the brain and autonomy of people, uh, it's uh, under the, the pressure, of course. Uh, but uh, coming deep into the artificial intelligence concept, um, we have a crossroads. And in Poland, we believe that uh, not so much uh, computing power is important, but uh, the people and know, know how, uh, how to modulate the data and uh, to, to keep talents uh, in our country. The, uh, finally, that will be uh, the feature, the, um, the, the big assets, uh, like a main enabler, small data and, and people. We try to uh, create our ecosystem uh, focusing on people and um, keeping uh, the knowledge uh, with our partners in, inside of Poland. Um, coming to the topic uh, about data and cross board of data policy versus intellectual property protection, um, we try to we try to find uh, the the solution in the raw data because uh, data is only a copy of information. Uh, it, but it's not subject of any ownership of data. The subject of ownership is the trade secrets coming, uh, the information coming from the from the um, industry. Also, uh, giving me this, this is important because uh, uh, data data utilization in intensity in uh, in Europe, uh, it's um, uh, it's uh, it's. Uh, presented on the topic and, and Slovakia, Poland and Hungary and even Czech Republic has a very even the same level. But it's worth, worth to say that uh, the, um, we decompose the, the, the productivity, um, total factor productivity and try to uh, produce the data driven product productivity. And finally, try to find how the Biggest country uh, find the barriers of, of utilization of uh, flowing of data. This is the uh, 18 and 25% uh, of this. Uh, this is a problem of, of about big countries you know, like German and that. The time is going, and uh, I asked uh, about concluding. But maybe I, I go to the the main topic which I which I produced for 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 today. This is our pr proposition for uh, Japan. Try to launch special uh, trade uh, trusted space of uh, sharing of data with methodology of decentralization storage of data, cyber safe, mutual recognition of standards uh, of API blockchain and special logic of rooms of trust from raw data in trusted club, but with respect of trade secrets and IP. 
this is very possible in the sector like industry, log logistic, uh, farming, health, and, 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 and finance. We believe in this. Um, I, I know that Japan um, is a promoter of, of data space globally, and uh, I, uh, from the Polish perspective, we accept that that way. Thank you very much for attention. Uh, I wait for questions and answers. Uh, thank you very much once more. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kroplewski, for this uh, uh, interesting presentation and uh, very interesting initiative. Hopefully, it will be uh, able to uh, develop uh, in the near future. Uh, the last, but uh, definitely not the least, of our experts is uh, Professor Maria Bielikova, who is one of the founders and the current chair of the Slovak Research Center for Artificial Intelligence called Slovak.ai. She is active mainly in research in modeling of human machine interactions and personalizations. Professor Bielikova, please. So, hopefully, everything is uh, all right. You can hear me and you can see my presentation. So, thank you very much for uh, inviting me and thank you even a, a lot more for providing this uh, event because uh, I Similarly, as my uh, previous uh, speaker, uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, Visegrad uh, group is very strong and not just Visegrad group. Uh, I think that we are more countries in Central Europe uh, who can collaborate uh, with uh, Japan and other other countries. Just uh, first um, to uh, tell you a bit about Slovakia because we are a very small country uh, as you can see just five and a half uh, million uh, population uh, but uh, what is uh, what is important uh, uh, we have uh, very bright people here and not just in Slovakia uh, here is a skill value rank uh, IT uh, ranking of countries uh, worldwide at, and you can see that uh, from uh, 2019 uh, Slovakia is uh, the best but uh, second, third and fourth are uh, uh, Visegrad uh, countries. Uh, so uh, we have um, very good tradition in this and very, very bright people. Uh, unfortunately, but maybe fortunately, some of them and many of them are abroad and uh, hopefully uh, we will uh, um, be able uh, to set up a process if uh, not, not just coming out, but uh, coming in uh, back uh, to the country similarly as, as Thomas, but I believe that uh, the, the worst uh, and, and the worst of country is really in people and we should share them uh, across the world and um, then develop uh, develop it. AI is a good uh, tool for it. I, I really see it as, as a tool, uh, not uh, as something which will save us as somebody uh, tell or something which is uh, destroy us. Uh, in Slovakia, we started with uh, um, AI some uh, uh, 50 years ago with a first AI paper uh, published and uh, last year we started uh, to closer cooperation uh, across all sectors, academic, private and government. In time uh, between uh, there were a lot of collaborations but uh, still they were just uh, uh, local uh, just um, one to one um, in in most uh, cases uh, but um, Slovakia a small country needs um, uh, one uh, reference point uh, a center and and then a network of uh, um, of not just people but organization and I, I believe that the similar uh, model can be applied to Europe and Europe already started with it uh, setting up uh, uh, networks uh, of excellence uh, in, in AI because we have uh, uh, a lot of countries, a, a lot of languages, uh, a lot of uh, uh, cultures uh, here. Uh, what is important in Slovakia, uh, the actual state which I would like to present you uh, today uh, is that um, 
uh, in 2018, uh, there was set up a strategy of uh, the digital transformation of Slovakia and uh, based on this in 2019, uh, um, from the bottom to up, a recommendation on AI development for Slovakia were uh, created. So probably we took uh, the different uh, way as it was in other countries. Uh, so it wasn't um, initiated by the government, but uh, community started uh, uh, to group and, and they created recommendation and they were uh, finally accepted by government and they were included in action plan for the digital transformation of uh, Slovakia. Uh, we um, make uh, two uh, surveys, uh, one on academy and one on private sector, and I will show you very briefly uh, the results and then you will see the shape uh, of um, uh, AI uh, in, in Slovakia. One more comment on this is that uh, on first uh, we concentrate on um, uh, deployment of AI. Uh, so to have as much uh, companies to at least use uh, AI and be AI positive. Uh, so it was developed um, a manual for companies to, to implement AI, but what is the most important is of course uh, research. And uh, I will uh, speak about this most time of uh, in, in, in my talk. Uh, this bottom up approach um, came from uh, Slovak AI, which was uh, informally started in 2018, but formally in 2019 as a platform for excellence in AI and platform bringing together students, researchers, entrepreneurs, teachers, investors, and so on. Uh, so we were able to put um, all together. So at this moment, we have uh, 59 institutional members, uh, including three founders, which are IT Association, American Chamber, and uh, Slovak University of uh, Technology. Speaking about the academic institution uh, with uh, uh, AI research, uh, we have in Slovakia seven uh, cent centers uh, for it, uh, two are in Slovak Academy of Science and then uh, universities, uh, which includes about um, uh, 200 researchers uh, in 27 research labs. Uh, what is uh, important is to see uh, which topics uh, they are interested on, so mainly uh, data analysis, machine learning, uh, natural language processing, computer vision, vision, speech processing, computational biology, knowledge representation, uh, and AI in uh, robotics is very strong, similarly to computer vision. Now I will very briefly uh, came through several success stories or several labs, so it will be really brief, but uh, you can come to this later because now I will present some pages from uh, uh, success stories from this um, uh, brochure. Uh, just I think what is important is to see uh, the the keywords, the what what researchers in Slovakia uh, are doing. So um, there are uh, there is group on transportation systems, uh, human cognition, uh, knowledge representation and reasoning, uh, unified communication, collaboration platform for enterprises, and some more projects with uh, Slovak uh, Academy of Sciences. Uh, they have quite a lot of uh, international projects. Um, there is a strong group of for um, natural language. language which processing, uh, which is collaboration of Slovak Academy of Sciences and uh, Technical University of uh, Košice. Um, uh, Slovak University of Technology is so uh, very strong in uh, robotics. There is a, a group of uh, Professor Duchon with uh, his uh, uh, a lot of uh, international activities interconnected with uh, Czech Republic, Hungary and, and other countries. 
um, biometrics, uh, multimedia processing, um, medicine, uh, um, with collaboration with companies, for example, this one with uh, Siemens Healthcare, um, uh, Nature Language Processing Group uh, is working on false information and antisocial behavior on the web, uh, so detecting uh, and um, and and this um, uh, solving this important problem. Uh, user modeling for e-commerce and e-learning. This is uh, my group with quite a lot of industry collaboration. A smart grid. Um, um, uh, Professor Sinchak is uh, very active in uh, uh, international uh, community. Probably uh, quite few people in Japan know him because he has a strong collaboration with uh, uh, Japan um, uh, and, and spend there some, some time. Um, data science. Um, uh, natural language processing speech. Um, cyber physical systems, uh, perception, uh, logistic. Uh, so this, you, you now you can you can have uh, some some picture on uh, what our researchers in uh, AI doing. Uh, but I now try to. Connect, reconnect, connect it with um, industry. So I've selected several uh, projects uh, from uh, industry where companies are active uh, in developing uh, AI. Um, I believe that it's important to um, connect uh, all sectors, connect people to know cultures. Uh, I've never been in Japan, but I tried it last Saturday uh, with um, uh, ramen soap. So uh, this was good inspiration for collecting uh, all this uh, to present you and to look forward uh, to um, uh, collaboration. Uh, we did a survey in uh, uh, private companies. 247 companies uh, were included uh, in this survey and you can see uh, that uh, more than half uh, are AI positive. That means uh, that uh, they at least uh, have some AI already on board or, or they think in a very short term, term to, to have it. Uh, the most intensive uh, AI application domain, uh, according this survey, was um, uh, finance uh, domain. But but you can see that there is there are more uh, with very small uh, uh, differences. So these are the uh, domains uh, in which um, Slovakia at this moment. Uh, um, is uh, has has the most results. Uh, actually, uh, to be honest, I have to say that uh, we uh, don't have set uh, priorities by our government uh, yet. So um, we still not just wait, but but we believe that our government will be able to put uh, one or two for Slovakia and uh, to try to develop it similarly as it is already done in Czech Republic. Uh, as I know, they they concentrate quite a lot uh, to uh, safety and, and security. Uh, uh, this picture uh, shows uh, what uh, uh, respondents in this survey uh, think about uh, future. So which um, domains they think that they will uh, develop then they are useful develop for Slovakia. Uh, there is a pretty much with uh, uh, previous uh, figure. Uh, I have to tell that um, not just um, not just solutions that will advance and innovate uh, our processes, processes, uh, products uh, and services, uh, but we uh, support um, European approach uh, to trustworthy uh, AI and you can see uh, here that uh, most of companies uh, 
uh, really uh, support it. We have a very active um, group of uh, um, researchers from uh, humanities uh, and social sciences, philosophers, uh, psychologists uh, who are really active and our government is just about being establishing uh, ethics, ethics board on the level of uh, on the level of government. Uh, here uh, there is a, a 10 examples similarly as I gave you examples uh, of uh, academic research. Uh, some of them are uh, in collaboration uh, with uh, academy, but most of them are at this moment just uh, results uh, provided by uh, industry and uh, private sector. I will go uh, very quickly uh, through it just uh, for you to see uh, to see the companies, to see um, the keywords, uh, what uh, are uh, they doing um, and how they use uh, AI for you. And, and then and then you can um, later on to go back uh, to this. So um, you can see um, uh, some uh, work on uh, chatbot and natural language processing, which is very important for Slovakia. We are a small country and nobody will uh, work on Slovak uh, language except some uh, from from Google, but uh, we, we um, uh, this is a quite high priority. Uh, actually, um, my student, uh, doctoral student in 2013, when uh, Thomas' uh, um, uh, language model uh, came in, in his paper, uh, started to work on it uh, as well. And I can um, uh, support what he has told that uh, at that time uh, nobody believed and we had really problem to persuade colleague, colleagues to uh, really um, accept this, that, that this is a good way uh, to do research in, in this domain. Uh, there is another company with chatbot uh, smart industry solution. Uh, there is a, a nice uh, solution for um, onboarding um, AI in maintenance, uh, manufacturing uh, image analyzers, uh, sentiment analysis. This is collaboration with um, Slovak University of uh, Technology. Um, most of the companies are not just Slovak companies. Uh, they 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 uh, run uh, based in Slovakia because we are very small country. Similarly, as as Exponia product, maybe uh, it's it's known more on on US. Um, uh, identification of new customers, uh, data processing for uh, energy, or and and we have uh, um, quite well known company with, in gaming, and they they use AI um, as well. So just to conclude uh, uh, my my presentation, uh, I uh, would like. Um, to stress uh, one more uh, then um, we uh, follow um, approach European Commission uh, started with uh, trustworthy AI and we really uh, believe and I believe that um, there, there is there are needed some uh, regulation and we need them worldwide because in other case um, uh, we can come to a um, situation in which uh, AI, I, I don't think the general AI is really uh, very close to us, but still uh, there is uh, danger in, for example, people monitoring and so on. This, But I don't think that we should put uh, so much uh, uh, effort just on negative risks, risk because there is also risk that we will not use potential of AI. So um, this is a strong industry position. Uh, uh, recently um, there was reaction of on uh, a lot of reactions on uh, white uh, paper on of on AI. 
uh, European Commission received some 1,000 and more responses. We will see how they will be, but uh, there was at least one from Central and East Europe, which was uh, very uh, strong in, in this uh, positive uh, use and, and uh, uh, risk of, of AI. What uh, we need in Slovakia uh, is um, to go from um, this uh, platform level uh, to the level of National Institute uh, of uh, uh, in Slovakia, which will be reference partner for everyone. And this is my uh, last slide and thank you. Uh, I believe that whole Central Europe is in interesting. Uh, uh, you can see Slovakia is uh, is here, the sm almost lowest, uh, smallest one, uh, but uh, with very bright people. Thank you. Uh, which question was it? Uh, which question was it? I didn't hear it. Yeah, about the Czech speaking AI, uh, which would uh, support elderly people. I did just uh, answer it uh, right now. So I know that actually uh, Jan Shedivi here at uh, CERC is uh, working with his team on, on chatbots that would be uh, helping, for example, people um, which are having some, uh, some uh, mental issues, like, for example, the diseases uh, of the type like Alzheimer. So he's trying to develop a, a communication agents that will be uh, helping these uh, people to communicate frequently, to use their memory so that uh, uh, it will be kind of like a mental training for them so they can stay healthy for longer. Uh, so I know, for example, about this example, uh, which is actually being performed here in Czech. Thank you very much. That's uh, the first question. The second question is uh, to uh, Mr. Kroplevsky. And the question is why the AI is not to use uh, to identify the obsolete or not the efficient legislation and international trade agreements mentioned in your presentation. Excuse me. Uh, thank you for this question. Um, this is um, an interesting question from the high level perspective. Uh, trying to answer why. Uh, this is a problem, of course, coming from the old um, legal framework of uh, treaties, international treaties, but also about the protectionism of status quo uh, uh, old community. This is, it, it was changed um, four years ago, um, community or, um, uh, focus uh, in the OECD tried to rebuild that um, uh, picture and decided to uh, create the agenda of uh, di digital, digital transformation, uh, even the members of the um, uh, OECD. And the project is called uh, Going Digital, and uh, because of that project we can observe, observe and observe now uh, how the uh, policy um, around the world of digital transformation um, is shaping by the countries and, and, and uh, actors. And uh, artificial intelligence, uh, unfortunately, it's too young to, to, to be seen by uh, treaties. But of course, we don't need to, to see this. Uh, it is enough because the free of market to, to, comp to co cooperate and establish uh, own rules like a good samples, good uh, code of conduct. For, it is, this is try, I try to answer of, of this. Thank you. And maybe one more thing. If we if you are on uh, on the World Trade Trade Organization forum, this is a big question. What is more important, old industry, agriculture, or new technology? And till now, maybe it's a little better, but till now the uh, agenda or digital agenda is still uh, before the door. Um, it's um, like a, even slave of all, old industries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question to Dr. Galambos, and uh, the the question is uh, that if you could uh, tell us the uh, cloud robotics application example and bottleneck of a slow connection. Yeah, thank you for the uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so in uh, in uh, cloud robotics architecture, it is very important. Uh, 
what can be put in the cloud and what uh, cannot be or what should not be. Uh, there are real-time uh, requirements in several robot applications. Uh, uh, that means, for example, uh, safety-related functionalities uh, cannot be uh, cannot be um, cloud sourced uh, uh, easily. But, for example, um, user interface functionalities uh, like uh, uh, chatbot functionality, natural language processing uh, functionalities, or some visual um, recognition, vis visual perception. Uh, that are not related to uh, to real time uh, safety critical functions uh, can be easily uh, moved uh, into the uh, uh, cloud. Um, current standards uh, not really um, discuss uh, uh, such distinction between uh, uh, safety and non safety related uh, um, uh, functionalities. But the, the risk assessment that is always uh, uh, necessary and required before uh, deploying and uh, commissioning uh, any robot applications uh, must, uh, must handle this uh, uh, question. Uh, and uh, although uh, cloud robotics uh, uh, has different uh, approaches, for example, in an industrial company, uh, <coughs> there, there uh, can be on-premise uh, virtualization of computing capacities, uh, which means the network distance between the uh, the application and the server is not so long. Uh, everything is uh, practically uh, in, uh, in a, a local uh, network infra infrastructure. On the other uh, um, extremum is uh, when the uh, the cloud sourced uh, computational capacities are in a public cl cloud in Google, Microsoft, uh, Amazon, etc. Uh, uh, when the availability is uh, uh, more uh, critical and uh, must be always uh, always uh, handled uh, properly. In our practice, uh, we uh, we deploy uh, on premises uh, solutions. Uh, where the uh, the host organization, the manufacturing company, uh, can uh, um, uh, guarantee the availability of the uh, virtualized services to the to the robotic uh, solution. Uh, I hope uh, I answered your question. Thank you very much. Uh, you sure did. Uh, question to uh, Professor Bielikova. What is for you more important, the artificial or human intelligence? Thank you. Uh, it's a really a tricky question, but uh, I, um, for for me personally, I uh, always uh, will prefer human intelligence because just uh, human create uh, machines. Um, uh, human brain um, is um, uh, a system which uh, really needs uh, not so much energy as our machines uh, uh, need. And uh, so, um, but to live uh, well, uh, we need uh, machine intelligence, as we can call it uh, in this way. Um, one day, maybe uh, uh, there will be general artificial intelligence. Uh, I don't think that it's so important to uh, know it, whether it will be or of whether it won't be. Uh, the more important uh, is um, uh, to try to use the machines as much as possible to serve uh, humans and to have educated humans to to have uh, intelligence. So I believe to uh, education uh, and not just education in uh, AI as, as we are speaking about AI, but uh, having educated people, uh, they then uh, will be able to save uh, our planet. In other ways, um, there can be some not very nice scenarios, I think. Thank you very much. Uh, it is uh, definitely a tricky question, uh, so I would like maybe to uh, ask another uh, presenters if someone wants to add something interesting to this. 
Okay, Mr. Kroplevsky. Thank you very much uh, to join me to, to add something because uh, I uh, accept and uh, support everything what Maria uh, said. Education is a key. Uh, we need to um, not so much uh, educate people in the di digital skills, but uh, more on uh, creativity, open minding and, and the working together. The collaboration is the future between people especially if we if, if we can find the uh, artificial intelligence like a machine like a networks of the ar artificial intelligence systems but in the same moment uh, i believe in this that we need to develop ourselves like a human intelligence and machine also because um, machines have uh, other features we uh, for example speedity yes but we have a and logic uh, consciousness we we are very creative like a people if we are but uh, we can use the uh, strength uh, side of artificial intelligence to uh, educate people and to help our everyday life this is that but thinking about the general alter, uh, artificial intelligence personally i'm not uh, optimistic that we can find that kind of machine why and maybe answer it's uh, uh, on that level because uh, our Polish philosopher um, Vladimir Sedlak in 70s said that uh, that uh, quantity of data will not create a consciousness. This is that because the consciousness is a more complicated, more complex way. If if it will be like that, we are rather safe. But it's a second feature also. To create the general intelligence, we need to um, establish, to build, but before develop the not determine determinate um, architecture of that kind of brain. This is big challenge for now. We don't have that knowledge. The artificial intelligence still is not so intelligent. It's a quiet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I guess uh, this was. Uh, very uh, exhaustive uh, uh, response. Uh, maybe uh, one final question for Dr. Mikolov. And the question is, uh, we see how people think about language, but how AI thinks about language. Do you think AI is considering human language as needed or would it become eventually obsolete? Uh, thanks for the question. I still see a couple of uh, more of them so i would try to answer this one quickly and i think there's actually one very interesting question that is uh, later in the in the chat uh, which i hope that we can actually all address uh, in the end so first your question uh do you think that ai is considering human language as needed or would it be uh, become obsolete that's that's kind of like a you know, like a strange question because if you actually see how these these uh, like ai models work basically you could see the language models uh, equations that i was showing during my presentation there's not really like any understanding at the moment we have statistical models that learn regularities in the language uh, uh, like from the point of view which words co occur together and that's actually the the core of the state of the art uh, today there's uh, no understanding. Uh, we don't even know how to create uh, uh, machine learning models that would have uh, any sort of reasonable memory capabilities. Uh, you can actually see that the best chatbots today don't have any memory. You can just uh, tell them some fact, ask about it next uh, in just the very next sentence and they will totally fail. So today we don't have any AI that understands language, which is like basically pattern matching. It's uh, smart techniques. They can work well. If you have like millions of examples of pairs of sentences that get translated between languages, yes, you can train a statistical model that will work as a reasonable machine translation, but there's no understanding behind it. It's basically just pattern matching. Uh, so that's to answer this question. Like uh, we don't have any AI that would be considering human language obsolete because we don't even have any AI that uh, actually has any uh, potential to understand the language at the moment. Of course, the researchers are the researchers are working on this. It's a it's a great scientific goal, uh, but uh, this question basically goes very much ahead of its time. Uh, so actually, the question that I did think that we can actually end uh, this uh, session with, which I think is uh, quite a tricky one, and that's why I actually think uh, each of us can uh, can address this is. Uh, uh, like what is the reason why the EU countries cannot uh, make a profit like the United States? And I think it's, a, it's actually quite important question because uh, 
we are discussing a lot here in Europe uh, uh, and not just in Europe, uh, uh, like uh, how to make uh, this AI ecosystem kind of like complete. Uh, that we should be not doing just the basic research, but we should be also like uh, applying this research to some new products and selling these products uh, should be kind of like a full circle. At the moment, uh, the circle doesn't really exist here. It does exist in Silicon Valley, it does exist in the US. Uh, uh, you have universities that produce students who go to companies that create novel pro uh, products uh, that uh, get sold uh, all over the world. But if you actually look at uh, where actually are lo located at the moment, uh, the biggest uh, kind of like AI companies, uh, you have them all either in the US, uh, you have few of them in China, but you have basically nothing in uh, either European Union or uh, or Japan. So I think that's uh, that's kind of like a difficult, uh, difficult topic. And I think that's the one that we should be actually uh, discussing uh, if we want to improve the state of, uh, of AI in Europe, like uh, where does the money go? How comes that we cannot uh, keep the profits here? Uh, what should we do? So I think it would be great if all of us uh, would try to give his opinions. So I just basically did this introduction. Uh, so I guess the other uh, others can uh, maybe try to answer it. Dr. Galambosch, do you have anything to add to this, please? So these sort of questions um, um, that uh, are challenging the maturity of, uh, of artificial intelligence is always very interesting. And uh, um, those questions are, are, are rather uh, uh, philosophical. Uh, at this uh, at this moment, I, I think, in my personal opinion, uh, first of all, we should con uh, concentrate on the improvement of, of uh, specialized AI uh, solutions, uh, both in, uh, in in for example motion synthesis related uh, fine uh, motoric uh, skill related uh, AI solutions, as well as the communication uh, related. Uh, and uh, and uh, business analytics uh, uh, related uh, AI uh, solutions, then uh, implicitly this process will improve uh, the generic uh, AI as well. And uh, this sporadic uh, situation uh, in which different points uh, in the in the in the spectrum is uh, uh, emerging, uh, after a while, everything we, will be just meshed into one uh, globally uh, meaningful uh, AI uh, solution, uh, which I, I, probably I, I think it, it will be some sort of uh, of, of mixture of uh, of very different ap approaches, uh, not not a single something, a single equation or, or a single structure. Uh, yeah, that's my fifty cent. Thank you. That was uh, excellent. Uh, Mr. Kroplevsky, do you have any uh, final sentence to say, please? My final sentence? Uh, wow. <laughs> the discussion was very interesting. Thank you for uh, any voice uh, from my colleagues, uh, presenters. Uh, trying to um, think uh, something um, on the, at the end. Uh, this is the key. Collaboration. We need to think from the big picture, we uh, need to find the like-minded partners. Japan, it's in my opinion, uh, it's like this. We have uh, our uh, good attitudes and good strength aside uh, from the industry, from people. We have a creative, creative people like Visegrad countries. We have a good situa situated, um, uh, situa uh, situated uh, countries uh, from the geo geopolitical. Uh, perspective, but uh, the new virtual collaboration is needed for productivity of members of that club and uh, well-being of society. Um, we are able, I think, um, to, to, to establish that kind of cooperation from the very uh, concrete project uh, perspective and uh, from the high-level policy uh, layer also. Um, that was good to take a part uh, with this uh, conversation. Trying to only answer for people because I see on, on the chat uh, is it any possibility to uh, come back to the new treaties, uh, Japan European Union. Uh, after 
two years more uh, the Union, uh, European Union decided to uh, to start that discussion. But we can now find the uh, very practical way how to uh, cooperate uh, with data, and, uh, even don't don't waiting for the legal uh, framework. It is a very big uh, perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could I ask uh, Professor Bielikova for her final comment? Thank you. Uh, I firstly uh, agree with uh, all uh, what was said, uh, especially now by uh, Robert. So I will not repeat it. Uh, I I will uh, go back to um, question uh, which um, um, Thomas has taken uh, about uh, why um, uh, Europe is maybe a kind of behind even though, uh, for example, research uh, in AI in uh, Europe uh, is uh, really strong and in many aspect, uh, aspects stronger than, than in uh, other uh, countries. Um, we have uh, some uh, history, for example, in this uh, Central and Eastern Europe, uh, these 40 years under communism, uh, actually we cannot skip it uh, in such short uh, history. Uh, and um, people minds uh, will need even at least one or two more generation. We have 30 years uh, after it, uh, but still um, uh, I can see in uh, even in young people uh, some uh, um, signs that um, are different as in, for example, US and uh, these people are in charge in government. So this is quite important that we need young generation and we have it. So what is good uh, in, in this sense that uh, uh, Europe and especially this part of uh, Europe uh, can be very attractive uh, because people are really uh, br bright and uh, hard uh, working, so they, they used to, to work uh, very hard. And I believe that in world uh, we can um, maybe uh, get success um, in a similar approach as AI uh, did. Uh, you know, in classical AI, we had uh, explicit knowledge represented uh, and, and used them. And in um, now sub-symbolic artificial intelligence, uh, when neural networks and deep learning are now uh, very active, it consists of, of very much many, many, many small actions and interaction. We don't understand how it works really, why it works really, uh, but it works. And I believe that we can learn from this uh, and, and we can do this uh, on the world level. So making a lot of uh, small collaboration and, and small centers, uh, big centers, and then interconnect and, and try to build such a um, neural network uh, within the collaboration. And this maybe will move, move, uh, move us and, and did a breakthrough. Uh, and then uh, we, we will not recognize that uh, this country is better because the last sentence, um, maybe you know, but uh, now um, not uh, countries uh, have uh, other richest uh, at, at world, but some companies are richer than, than many countries. So, so situation is now really changed. Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you, for very interesting contributions. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that we exhausted the time and uh, we came to the end of today's agenda. Uh, thank you all very much for your kind attention. Uh, we do hope that in spite of some uh, minor imperfections, the webinar uh, was interesting for you and that it brought you some useful information and new ideas and that it opened uh, maybe some promising areas for the development of future cooperation between Japan and the uh, Visegrad group countries. I would like to very much thank the whole organizing team, all the supporting institutions, and above all, our four excellent presenters. Uh, please uh, stay in touch, stay safe, and have a nice day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.
poznať. Na Do zobaczenia.